Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and I want to talk to you about what else? GDPR. And specifically, I want to talk about consent when it comes to collecting cookie data in your analytics, as well as general consent and some of the things that I'm going to be doing on the Jefflytics website when it comes to tracking. Now, as you can probably guess, getting consent from users and what it means, both in terms of GDPR as well as e-privacy initiatives, it's as clear as mud. And so I'm going to do my best to take that muddy water and make it more clear. And I'm going to share it in terms of the things that I'm planning on doing with my own site and some of the actions that I'm taking. So listen up if you want to learn more about cookie consent or just consent in general, and maybe get some practical tips or a good summary as to what consent means and some more resources that you might find valuable. So listen up and we're going to talk about getting consent for the data that you collect. Okay, so let's talk about consent for GDPR and how it affects your Google Analytics data. And if you watched my last video about IP anonymization for standard tracking in Google Analytics, your next question was probably, is there a way to use Google Analytics advanced tracking in GDPR countries and remain compliant with GDPR. And unless your memory is photographic, you're probably wondering what were those advanced Google Analytics tracking methods you talked about, Jeff? So let me refresh your memory here. Advanced Google Analytics installs, it means that you're potentially collecting many forms of personal data or third-party data using Google Analytics. And this happens when you do demographics, display features, things like remarketing within Google Analytics, as well as user ID tracking, or even your custom dimensions. There are ways that you're going to store somebody's personal data. Even if it's aggregated, you're going to store it in your Google Analytics if you do some more advanced tracking. So basically, anything beyond just collecting somebody's IP address, which is, from my understanding, all that you collect in the basic standard install of Google Analytics. If you go beyond that, then you potentially need to get consent because you're collecting personal data. And when that happens, you need to have some kind of notification or some kind of way of obtaining somebody's consent. So the ultimate question you probably have is, can you track this data in Google Analytics under GDPR? And the answer is yes. If you receive consent to be tracked, you can track this data. And then you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what exactly is consent? Is it one of those funny pop-up things? What does it look like? How does it work? Is there a standard behind it? How is all this stuff coming together? And I'm going to warn you, before I answer this question, I'm going to tell you this. I'm just a simple person. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not providing you with legal advice. I'm just a caveman. And my caveman understanding is that with no personal data collected, you don't need to explicitly ask for consent to track visitors anonymously. Key word here, anonymously, because you're not tracking any of their personal data. It's not personal. You just need to implement the solution that I blogged about on Jefflytics about IP address anonymization in Google Analytics. But if you have advanced GA user tracking or you share data with third parties, then a consent pop-up absolutely makes sense. And under GDPR, it's mandatory in that case. So what does a consent pop-up look like? You've probably seen them before. Here's what a consent form looks like using a tool called CookieBot. I pulled this from my friends at Conversion Works. I went to their site doing some research, and actually I wrote about them in the IP address anonymization article, and they informed me into what cookies they're using, and they showed the options here. And as you can see here, if you went into the cookie declaration, you could see everything that they're doing and how it's working here. So they're very transparent about what cookies they are using. And they are using a tool called CookieBot, and I just want to show you how this works in action using Google Chrome development tools. So I'm going to go into my browser and I'm going to go to the CookieBot website and I'm going to show you how they handle consent and how this all works together. Okay, so here I'm on the CookieBot website. And this is one of those things where I've already set it up to show you what I want to show you. I'm in the Chrome browser and I've opened up my developer tools and I've gone to network. And I have loaded this page for the first time. As you can see here, a lot of resources have been loaded on this page, but I have not done any scrolling or clicked on OK to this consent box here. Now, if you look at the CookieBot website, this is a very well-regarded tool for keeping track of GDPR compliance, and they're getting a lot of play and a lot of love right now because of their simple and effective solution that's very transparent. 
And so I figured using this website to see how they implement it on their own website might be a good example of how this stuff comes into play. Now, if you look at these resources here, generally speaking, if you're on any website, there's usually a analytics.js beacon that is pushed here. There's usually the GA collect method. There's a lot of stuff going on. But if you look in here, really, if you go to this page, the only things that are running are JavaScripts and images. And there's a, this is Google Analytics, but this is actually the article that I'm on, the Google Analytics GDPR article. So don't think that's the Google Analytics beacon. That's just the article that I'm on that I chose to navigate to to do this test. Now, that might have been a mistake, but oh well. I'm just going to show you how it works. So I've not done anything to consent yet. I've not clicked OK. You can look at the show details. You can do everything you want to here. You can check on marketing if you want to. Now I've checked on marketing and, and that really just changed the images that are coming up. So that just made a PNG show up and that's really the difference between an unchecked box and an empty box. That's really it. That the new check box image showed through here. Now when you talk about obtaining consent, there's many ways that this can be implemented. But what I've found is that most of these tools, what they do is they say either OK to consent or scrolling and viewing the rest of the page qualifies as consent. So obviously, if I clicked on OK here, you would see these images and scripts loaded here. But check out what happens when I scroll as well. So if I start scrolling, notice here all of these things have happened here. So they've logged my consent. They've said, yes, Jeff Sauer consented to this website and everything else came through and they've started collecting data. And these are all the JavaScripts that we normally see happen right away. You can see they're running Hotjar, they're running Google Analytics, they're running Facebook, they're doing all kinds of stuff. All kinds of tracking is happening here as a result. And so when you look at this, it's pretty fascinating to see how this happens. Now this is something you can do on any website, any website that has a consent form. Basically you can see how it's been implemented. And they're choosing to do it on scroll, or if you click on OK, it gets logged as well. So consent is happening in two different ways on this website, either explicit by clicking on a button, or implied consent because I'm scrolling past the notice. And they are taking the stance that if I scrolled past it, then I'm giving them my consent and these things fired here. So I don't know about you, but that was pretty interesting to see how this worked. And of course, there's differences between how each software chooses to implement this, but this is the basic premise for how consent works. Basically, you delay your scripts until you achieve consent. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, does consent require you to click OK, or how do you verify consent? Because in the case of CookieBot, just scrolling qualified as consent. Is that something you can do? Let's take a look at what Facebook says which is really rare for me to trust a vendor, but they have a very clear developer's app that says, what is consent? So Facebook's developer's tool, if you look at developers.facebook.com slash docs slash privacy, I found they've had some really helpful examples of who needs consent. And so if you take a look at this page, they say a retail website that uses cookies to collect information, a blog that uses an analytics provider that uses cookies, to capture aggregate demographic info on its readers. Again, this is the advanced version of Google Analytics. A news media website, a Facebook advertiser who installs the Facebook pixel on their website. So this is pretty much everyone. Pretty much everybody who uses the internet probably needs to get some kind of consent. And then they say, how do you get consent? And this was pretty revolutionary for me to see this. Basically, they're saying that if you navigate beyond a banner or notice, that is consent. If you dismiss it, that is consent. And if you click on the I agree or the OK button, that is also consent. Now, of course, you should verify what is consent with your attorney, because even though Facebook is taking that position, it doesn't mean that's the right position for you, and you should make sure that you verify what is consent. But I've seen enough examples, and I'm sharing the examples with you right now to see that a lot of people are using scroll to consent, and as of the time of this video, I'm just letting you know that that's what people are doing, but you should verify it with your attorney. I'm not saying it's okay, and I'm not saying that's even what I'm doing on my website. I just wanna let you know what I'm seeing, and I've given you a live example of what I see on the internet today. The other thing that Facebook talks about in their developer's documentation is the choices you can provide to your users for opting out of tracking. And so you might wanna consider using these as well to opt people out of tracking. Now I'm gonna be doing a video in the future about opting out and even deleting data from Google Analytics, and that's gonna be coming up in the future, and I might even go back to this article and cite this once again. And finally, to close up this video, I wanna talk about consent form implementation techniques for analytics, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. This is growing by the day, I see solutions all the time, but I just wanted to give you some of the techniques that both 
I have discovered and the community has discovered or even developed as a result of implementing consent forms. And the one thing I would say about this is that you don't need to be super scared about consent forms. There's a lot of people who are doing this and there's a lot of free options that are out there. And of course, free does not always mean that it's going to be the best solution, but there are lots of techniques that are out there right now. So here's some ones that I have found. Obviously, CookieBot, which I just shared with you how they operate on their own site. That's one that is getting a lot of traction out there and I've seen it mentioned many, many times. Of course, with CookieBot, I'm not sure if there's a drop-off or if there's just an implementation issue, but this tweet that came in from Andy Crestodina basically said that they implemented this solution of CookieBot on their client's website and the traffic just tanked. Of course, the analyst in me is a little bit skeptical because it looks like this site lost US traffic as well. That could have just been a natural pattern. There's many other reasons that this could have happened, but it is something that would cause reason for alarm for all of us. And so you want to make sure that if you implement a solution that you understand what the potential drop-off could be. There's another one called, I'm going to get this name wrong, but I think it's the Ayubenda or Ubenda cookie solution. This is something that was recommended to me in the comments on one of our previous posts by commenter Falk, and they basically said that this is free for 25,000 page views a month. And of course, most websites get less than 25,000 page views a month, so this solution might work out pretty well for you. My friend Julius over at Analytics Mania, one of my favorite analytics blogs out there, he created his own way of doing it with Google Tag Manager, and I link to it in the notes here. And you might want to choose his solution for implementing cookie consent. The people at Portent, they also made a Google Tag Manager consent form. This one even has a geofence, which is pretty cool. And so you might even be able to do a geofence around your consent form, and this might be of interest to you. Now I've talked about implementing a geofence in my own case on Jeffalytics in previous videos. I'm still undecided as to what I want to do though in that case. So we'll see what solution I come up with and I'm starting to see it on both sides now that maybe a geofence is not a good idea and maybe it is. I'm still undecided on it and so we will see what solution I implement and I'll make sure to share that with you in a future post. And even Jetpack for WordPress adds the ability to add a cookie banner to your website. And so they made it as easy as clicking on add a widget and you can add this widget right to your website through Jetpack for WordPress. So some people are making it easier for you to do and the technology to deliver this should be pretty painless and there are free options that are out there. So you can comply with GDPR with free options if you are looking to do this and not break the bank. And the final question that I wanted to bring up but I'm not going to answer in this video is how are we doing this at Jeffalytics? And to that, I say stay tuned, because we are still working on implementing a solution and working through this. We have a lot of different partnerships that we're working on, templates for disclaimers, technologies, and everything. And so that is still in the works, and we are working to bring ourselves into compliance for tracking. And I'm going to let you know the solution we choose in an upcoming video. So if you want to see this, make sure you leave a comment and let us know that you want to see our solution, exactly what we're doing, and I'd love to share that with you. So thanks for watching this video and for more GDPR resources and documentation of my journey to discovery, check out jefflytics.com.